Hey everyone, Rob here and got some updates. Now I know it's a little bit of time in between the last update, but there's not a huge amount of information that's come out. And it seems like the earthquakes have come sort of a little bit less frequently than they were at the beginning. But there was a post from the Meteorological Society of Iceland, and you can see they posted on Facebook here, and they said about since midnight, about 1,400 earthquakes have been recorded in connection with the latest activity between Fagrtsvat and Kalir. And you can see here uh, at this point of the map, right here is Kalir, and then Fagrtsvat is sort of down here in the bottom left. The largest earthquake that they're measuring lately is 4.3 at 8.28 in the morning and was located around Kalir. Uh, and it was spotted all over around the southwest corner of Iceland, as you can see. Now, today's activity has mostly been to the northeast compared to the last few days, and it's believed due to voltage changes, is what they're saying. It's all in Iceland. Now, GPS data shows no expansion northeast of Kalir at this time. And the latest data, based on the satellite images from the ice SAR on days uh, on the 7th and 8th of July indicate that the magma tunnel is moving closer or even closer to the surface and it's the uppermost part is at about a depth of 500 meters and so the inflow of magma is now similar to the last eruption or around 54 meters cubic per second. There have been some rock falls in the vicinity of this area there's Clevavat and things like that which is that you can see the club about is the water onto the right hand side over here um, following that 4.5 earthquake and rocks fell among other things on the roads that are in the area um, the sort of road workers worked to clean all that up as a result and, and they just want to remind people to beware of steep slopes and a lot of the roads along this area you can see the mountainous range near that water here this mountain here uh, there's a road that goes along here and so steep slopes be very careful if you're driving in that area because some rocks could fall on over there but there is a clear indication and all data indicates that the magma is now near the surface but if or when it reaches the surface is the big question that everyone's asking right now so if we move over to some of the other news we get here from MBF which is one of the big news agencies here um, and they had an interview with Berendik Gunnar, and I can't pronounce this, Olfiksen, hopefully, he's an expert in, in the field of crustal movements at the Icelandic Meteorological Office. And he says that they expect the eruption and the lava to surface at any moment. And he's quite surprised that it hasn't happened already. It seems to him that there is some sort of obstacle that is delaying it, um, but it should be be apparent and it should happen very soon he doesn't consider the seismic activity northeast of killer as we just sort of saw to be an indication that the magma is moving closer in that direction uh, nor is he saying it's possible that the eruption will occur there but he believes it's much more likely that it is a trigger action due to the tension changes in the earth's crust all around the area and it's believed that magma will most likely arise between Fagrasfeld and killer and we go back to this map we can see here killer here so he's thinking it's somewhere in this area here. Now, uh, he says that the meteorological office has GPS meters that are very close to today's earthquake sources. Their data will be processed early this evening. So that's tonight. Hopefully we get something uh, from that later on, uh, which will probably give a clearer picture. As I mentioned before, that does not expect the data will reveal that the magma is sort of moving other areas. Now, there's, there's tons of information on all of this. Uh, and when Benedict was asked about all of that ISI satellite stuff that came out that showed that the magma had reached a depth of 500 meters from the surface, uh, given the data is now a day old, he's saying that it's assumed the magma has moved even closer to the surface, uh, and he bases on the assessment that the news may be published shortly, so all that information that they're gathering. He says, again, the magma is probably struggling through some sort of obstacle. It's going to be assumed it's going to come up, uh, and... He, he thinks it's bad to predict too much about the progress of an eruption that has not already begun. And we've seen lots about this. I remember on the first eruption, there was on the news, some guy said, oh, there's not going to be an eruption, it's going to die out. And then like five minutes later, the volcano erupted. So we got uh, we got here. Uh, as it's continuing, I mean, sort of the big news is, is talking, every single news channel is talking about that uh, the cluster of the the earthquakes is now moving a little bit 
to the north of Kailir. And they're saying seismic activity on the Reykjanes Peninsula is moving northeast. Uh, but the earlier, it's been shaking around Fagelsfeld, which is where the other eruption was. Um, and it may be a trigger actually on the north-south crack that lies east of Kailir. But again, they're going to be meeting today. They'll be assessing the data and taking a look at what exactly is going on. They're always in a state of alertness. This is what uh, Hjordis uh, Gudmundsdottir said, and communications director of the Public Safety Department of the National Police. And she noticed that today's public safety meeting is a regular one, and the situation will be assessed as a, as a final sort of meeting point. So it's, they're not doing any sort of special event for that today. And the reaction is based on that, not by the police in the southern area, which is different than is before. Uh, and they do know a little bit more now. Uh, and she's referring, of course, to the experience gained in the eruptions from Felt, both the initial one and then the secondary one. And the emergency responders and all the great volunteers that are there, they're all hoping that the eruption will occur in a similar area. And it would be then possible to use the infrastructure that's already in place. For example, you know, the parking lots that they've built and, and the pathways for people to very safely observe this if it allows for now, of course, the magma could pop up anywhere in this area. So you can see, again, from these two charts, the, this is all an area where it could be possible. Um, and the police were asked, you know, should should they just not close this area while we're waiting? And what they've decided to do is just appeal to everyone's common sense. And they do have the power to close off the areas. But they have agreed alongside with the rescue teams and things like that and the police to not close the areas but to inform people and try to inform them that these are not the best areas to go for a walk lately um, because they all also of course they want to talk to the tourism industry tourism industry and hope that they can uh, also cooperate with what everything that's going on as the magma is at a shallow depth the experts are all agreeing that it's only a matter of time before the magma manages to break through the earth's crust so the final piece of news huge headline here uh, this came out yesterday uh, this, we talked about this guy Thorvald Thorsson uh, he's a professor of volcanology at the University of Iceland and the headline of course is really shocking the calm before the storm but he believes that the current calm so this sort of reduction in the earthquakes and, and crustal movements is most likely the sequence of events that is going to trigger an eruption. He said this is the same sequence of events that we knew from the eruptions in 2021 and 2022. And the seismic activity is there. It's still happening, but it's decreased, as we said, which he's saying may indicate that the earthquakes occur at a very high place in the crust. And so it's difficult to locate them when they're so shallow. Now, he does point out the inflow into the magma tunnel is now half as much as it was during the 2021 eruption. This could mean that the overpressure of the magma that is reaching the surface can be considerably higher. Now, this is news to me, but I was reading this and it was a bit shocked. It said this may mean that the lava may come up much faster than they saw in the previous eruptions with higher magma plumes and faster lava flows. So the power will therefore be somewhat greater than we've seen in the previous two eruptions. So, of course, with all of that information, it's best not to be too close. Now he says that it's he's not against people taking advantage of the good weather to walk around the area because it's been fantastic summer days here in Iceland this weekend. Uh, but of course, he's saying, much like the police are saying, everyone, it's not the best area to definitely go over and walk around. I mean, it's a it's huge amount of seismic activity going in this area. It's best to stay away because of the rock falls, the unrest, who knows where uh, something might erupt. So it's better to uh, to pick different areas. But if people do detect smoking coming from cracks where it has not been, been seen before, or if they see steam rising, it's a great idea to just get away because water be begins to dissolve from the magma at a depth of 100 to 300 meters, which means that there's not much that separates someone walking around just on the surface from the magma that's just below. So again, Thorvald believes that it's, it's very likely that the next eruption will occur with considerable force and that the lava flow will be very large at the beginning. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to have a very long distance, maybe you know one or two kilometers, but this is all of the news that he's saying. Again, we're talking about what's going on within, with the earthquakes. We can see here all of these stars still pointed in the same sort of area. We can see that it's considerably less, uh, the actual number, 
1700 over the last uh, 48 hours and if we go three and larger we can see that there's not too many that we've had that were big ones we had you know some 4.5s on saturday uh, but today quite few that i've actually felt uh, in in my house just a couple here and there nothing that's really kept me up at night so far the last couple of days but that's it i mean this video was a bit longer a little bit more information than the last one so we are definitely going to keep an eye on what's going on and as everyone's saying this could be the calm before the storm we could be maybe tonight maybe tomorrow having that eruption happen or much like uh we did in the last series of videos i think it was a couple months back where there was a lot of activity and then it just fizzled out that's also likely so uh i guess stay tuned Subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, we'll see what happens over the next day or two. So, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, <laughs> bye.